Hello everyone. In today's session, we are going to discuss about Umpa's world, Umpa's world problem in artificial intelligence. So this Umpa's world problem is a computer game based uh, problem like where uh, a person or an agent, it is a single agent problem. A uh, agent is going to play a game and the game is nothing but like he need to enter into a cave and this cave consists of a lot of rooms and these rooms are arranged in this grid pattern. Okay, and it has a single door to enter and exit and uh, uh, like we don't know any idea about what's happening in the next room. Okay, and here for our uh, simplification, we, we have taken it as an uh, four cross four grid. And here when the agent usually he begins in one comma one room number, he just need to get into uh, the room, kill the umphas and get the gold and come back out of this like he need to come out of the cave okay so this is the uh, umpha's world problem and sometimes in a uh, in some of the rooms there will be a pit and when the agent enter into the pit he'll just die and when the agent enter into the umpha's cell the umpha's will kill him and uh, those those rooms like near the umpha's it will have a stingy smell and uh, those rooms that are near to this uh, pit will consist of breeze so this actually gives an additional information regarding the uh, environment that is currently present and the room that uh, has a gold will have a glittering effect in the room. Okay, now with these clues, the agent need to enter into the cave and uh, he have a single arrow, like he can use the arrow only once to kill the umpas when he stands straight in the room and when he just use the arrow, the umpas will die. Okay, so this is what an overall first world problem is about. It is a computer game where the agent need to explore the cave consisting of rooms connected by the pass, uh, passageway. And somewhere we have a first, a beast that each is, is the agent when he enter into a room. And there is a bottomless pit when the a, uh, agent enter into the trap, he will die. Occasionally, there is a room for gold. Agent can uh, visualize the glitter effect and he can use the gold in the room. That has an additional point. The goal is to collect the goal and exit the world without being eaten. Okay, so this is a description, uh, detailed description about what is an Umpha's world problem. Now, how are you going to represent here? Okay, mm -hmm. so representation, we use this grid pattern. Uh, we use this one comma one x axis value followed by this y axis value to uh, denote that which room the agent is in. And we have, we have to logically find a way of what will be the next move. Okay, so one possible example I'll show you. And I'll show you like how we're going to, how the agent can be used and knowledge, like knowledge about this uh, present scenario, right? Each time when he enter into a box, we'll have a knowledge about it. So initially when the agent is in one comma one, there is no breeze on, there is no stringy smell. That actually me means that the nearby cell doesn't have any uh, umphas or pit. So the agent is able to move either to the box one comma two, or he can just move to two comma one. So both the possibilities are free for him. So this is the knowledge that we are going to use, and we are going to use a representation for this knowledge. Okay. So the agent person agent can perceive like uh, what all the perception that agent can take now. Like he can he can have a the he can smell that stinchy smell when the for all those. Uh, rooms that are adjacent to umphas and breeze that is adjacent to pit and the uh, place where the gold is there is a glitter and there is a bump like if he just um, walk into a wall he will bump and there is a scream when the umphas is killed okay so these are all the possible percepts, uh, perceptions that an uh, agent can have okay so this can be represented like this like you can usually have it as an um, or is it a zeros and one condition? Like you can have stingy smell, breeze, followed by uh, no bump, no glitter, no bump, no scream. Okay, so this five elements can be used as a representation of a current uh, scenario. So when I am in this cell one comma one, there is nothing. Okay, so we'll have all zero constraint. There is no stingy smell, no breeze, no glitter, no bump or no scream. All zeros. Okay, so this is the perception that you're going to get it from the environment and based on the perception of uh, from each and every uh, cell, 
we are going to analyze what will be the next possible move, a safer move an agent can take. And uh, overall thing, like what all the actions that can be performed, like after the perception, we need to know what all the action an agent can perform. He can either go forward, turn left, turn right, grab. When he is in the room of gold and we can sense there is a glittering in it. So he, we can use this grab request for grabbing up the gold and shoot. Shoot is like he can fire an arrow in the direction of Umphas to kill it. Okay. So a uh, uh, climb is to leave the cave when he is really in this one comma one, he can move out of it. And die is an automatic action. Like whenever um uh, Umphas, like whenever he enter into the room of Umphas or when he enter into the pit room where you have a pit, the agent is killed. The game is over. Okay, so these are all the actions that can be taken into constraint. So this is the overall way, like a piece way of uh, representing uh, the problem, first word problem. Okay, the performance measure here is like when he get the gold, 1000 points is given. When he dies, 1000 points is deducted. It is minus 1000. Uh, and uh, falling into pit or eaten by your ooms is your death condition. And uh, each step when he take minus one point is deduced. And when he use a arrow, we have only one arrow, only one time he can use it, minus 10 point for it. See, whenever we play a game, so uh, we have that uh, performance, like uh, there will be some uh, coins collected or uh, some we will have the bonus, right? So that is how uh, the actual uh, uh, person who have developed the game, in like make it interesting to reach the next level. So each time they will give five stars or you'll have a coins collected. And with that points, we can do something just like that, right? So that are all your performance measure. Okay, so these can be taken as a performance measure. And the environment here is this box. Okay, rooms in the form of squares connected by a door and adjacent to the umphas has a stingy smell. Adjacent to the pit can have a breeze. Breeze, okay, and all those glitter, whatever we have discussed so far grabbing releasing okay when the okay randomly generates and this is the sensors what we have collected right see we have stingy small breezy five inputs perceptions since inputs are there right and activators are the one actions that are performed okay so those are all the one that we have discussed perceptions five or uh, tuple notation and actions represented like this turn left right forward grab release and shoot and now we have analyzed what is an Umphas world problem. Okay, so now we'll check the characteristics of this Umphas world problem. So uh, we can say that the uh, environment is fully observable. No, only the agent who is entering, he have an awareness about the present scenario. If there is a uh, breeze in the present room, he knows that the nearby room, somewhere we have a pit. So that is all he can observe in a current scenario. So only local perception is possible. And is it deterministic? Yeah, outcome is very specific. We exactly know what happens in each and every step. Static, yeah. The hoofers and pit will not move. Okay, if it change its room dynamically, that is different. So here it is going to stay here, stay in the same place all the time. Is it discrete? Yeah. Is it a single word? Yeah. Okay. So these are all the characteristics that we have analyzed. So next step is how we are going to represent this Umphas world problem and how we are going to uh, find a solution for it. Okay, so I'm just going to give you uh, one, uh, one or two steps to explain how you're going to explore this Umphas world problem. Now the agent is actually going to begin in this one comma one cell. So agent, he's going to enter the cave over here one comma one where uh, the perceptions that you're going to get it in that room is there is nothing. No stinchy smile, breeze, gl glitter, bump or scream. Okay, so the condition can be represented as all zeros. Okay, we use this, uh, like this is like an, um, or you just have SR, no solution for it. So each step we have, if the stingy smell is present, we can have it as either S yes or no. Breeze, S yes or no. So we can use a Boolean representation for this. Okay, so this is the percept, current percept. And next, when can, uh, what all the possible move he can make? He can either move to the, like he cannot walk diagonally. He can either move left or right one step. Okay, so now according to the agent's percept at time zero, we exactly know that 
the agent is uh, uh, agent is actually safe to move either to this one comma two or two comma one. Okay, so we he have a possibility of moving to this cell or this cell. Now, based on that, we can actually go ahead with this next time. So time zero, it is your initial position, and with that, we've got a perceive that the next two cells are safer for him. That is one comma two. And two comma one is safer for him to enter since there is no stringy smell, so over is not going to be there, and there is no pit uh, breeze, so you don't have a pit over there. Now, when uh, when we visited, like this is visitor, and when we make a move to this two comma one box, in this place we have a breeze. Okay, so when a breeze is present in the cell, this actually means the nearby positions, like here it is. Two comma one, either in the cell of one comma one or two comma two or three comma one, we have a possibility of a pit. Okay, so that is the percept that we can get by at time one. Okay, so at time one, we got a breeze in the cell of two comma one. So all those nearby, not diagonally adjacent cells, will have a possibility of having a pit. and we already know that we have already explored this one comma one and there is no uh, pit in it okay so the possible places where we can have a pit is either the pit will be there in two comma two or three comma one okay and we have we don't have any idea of which place where the pit is so we cannot directly proceed on moving either to the cell two comma two or three comma one okay when we exactly know that there is somewhere you have a pit we don't have to take risk Okay, when an agent enter into a pit, he will just die. The game over. Okay, so what can be done now? He can just move back again and take the next possible move. Okay, so here we have started from this one comma one and made a move to two comma one, but there is uh, from that we have got a perceive that we got we have a pit in this. So we just go back and take this uh, one comma two the next move. Okay, and what happened in this one comma two? We have a stingy smell there. and when you have a stingy smell somewhere in the cell that is near to that place you have a omphus okay so omphus will present in either this cell or this cell but we already know that in this cell we don't have a stingy smell so here to come at two you don't have a possibility of a omphus and again you don't have any stingy smell in this one comma two so if uh, sorry breeze in this one comma two so when no breeze is there there is no possibility of pit over here okay so that is the perception that we can have by this time three okay so time three we can say that omphus cannot be in one comma one okay or two comma two the reason is in one comma three uh, you you don't have a you don't have a omphus okay and uh, no breeze so this is the perception there is no breeze in this cell so here you don't have any possibility in 2 comma 2 you don't have any possibility of having a pit okay so with that you can proceed on the next possibility okay so this is how we explore the omphus world problem and we have a perception described from each and every step and using that perception we try to create a logical relationship Okay, so with this logical relationship, we can say that this is the place where you have a possibility of having a pit. So these two are the place where you can have a pit. The reason is here you have a breeze, and with the perception, we can know that there is no breeze over here in this place, so there is no pit. So exactly the pit is found in this three comma one. So this definition is actually this place of finding the possibility of exploring your present environment, right? So that is stored in your knowledge base and we use this logical reasoning for deriving the rules okay so this is how uh, this is how our omphus world problem works and um, this is why we are going for uh, learning a logical representation of uh, representing any problem and uh, deriving the reasoning out of it okay in the next session on i'll be explaining about the different possible ways in which a logical statement can be represented and how you're going to derive a reasoning out of it like we have a proportional logic and predicate logic things over there so that we are going to discuss in the next session okay thank you